To say them a bit obsessed with doing crawlers is an understatement. These are the models that ground by the throat and made me worship the Omnisire. I love the whole aesthetic they got going on. Their insectile robot design is, in my opinion, one of the best concepts the GW has done. So, last year, I followed a tutorial online to make my first curved top dune crawler. This pushed more heavily on the idea of a beetle, with its armoured shell protecting its vital innards. But I wasn't done there. I decided to have another go at this, but with a twist. I used remote control robot. I brought the insect to life. No longer do I have to imagine what a dune crawler would look like scattering across the battlefield. Now I can see the very thing. This is my concept video, design and completion of the Dome Crawler. Now I am no expert when it comes to real life electronics, so I got a little help from a product that you can pick up from your friendly international monopoly on consumer goods, Amazon. This nifty little bug is fully operational out of the box. It comes with a controller, there's a product video and shows it scuttling around with his little friends. Little does it know that soon, it will be the subject of my machinations. I'll be transformed in the name of the Emperor! So let's get into Blender and quickly make the shape of this hex bug, which we can build onto. It all seems so easy. So easy. It wasn't. I start by building the dome by adding a sphere mesh. I increase the amount of vertices so we can have a nice smooth ball and resize it to fit the top of the hex bug. I jump into side view to ensure that the dome will cover the width of the model, giving it a lovely canvas for more detail. Deleting the bottom of the sphere, I then fill in the hole at the bottom before bringing the centre section down so it will slot snugly onto the bug. The problem now is that the legs will rub against the dome, so I make a curve that lifts the base away from any moving parts. We still want this guy to move after all. With the outside of the dome finished, I made a recess in the base so it will slot onto the hex bug. Because the batteries are situated in the centre body of the machine, my design will have to be able to be removed. This is why it's important to get the measurements right. Too loose it will not stay on, too tight and we will not be able to remove it to replace the batteries. Now with all the engineering out of the way, we can get on to the fun part, designing the details. I begin by making the window for the crew to see out of. This was done by making more spheres and cutting them in half like the main body. A little bit of push and pull and the windows are done. I did the same for the second, then used the body of the model as a centre point. I would rotate it around and duplicate it a couple more for good measure. Now this little dude is looking all cute, round and adorable. Let's give it a big f off gun, that's more 40k. Using a basic cylinder, I give it some extraneous details and pop in some cooling vents, or whatever they're called. I honestly know less about guns than machinery. I have truly failed the Omnisire. Next I added some baubles and knobs something to make this basic bitch barrel into a classy ass cannon. Let's make this a bit bigger, he's a shower not a grower. To join the cannon to the model, I had a little box which would not only hide the awkward cut, but also add more support between the two objects, as I'd be printing them separately. I give the guy a few extra details, such as panels and a hatch on the top for the pal to enter and exit. The underside of the dome is looking a little barren and odd. To add a little more detail to the model, I added some piping, just to break up the surface and provide something pleasing for the eye. To finish off the dome, I give it some small auxiliary guns to stop the bad guys from attacking from behind. It looks pretty good so far, and quite distinct from the regular hex bug. But his legs still look a little spindly. I can't imagine him lasting long on the 40k battlefield with those tiny things. So let's get this guy to the gym. It's leg day, baby! I start on the top armor section. A simple cube will be all that is needed. 
I had the cylinder and manipulated it to form an interesting shape. I added some cog teeth to the design. It is meant to be an Admet Doom call after all. Then I multiplied it by 6 for each leg to see how it would look. For the lower section I got a bit more creative. Using the proportional editing tool I pushed and pulled the panels into an interesting shape, giving it more of an angular silhouette. I again tried to incorporate as many cog teeth into the design as possible, whether it be on the side of the armour or on the side support which will help it stick to the hex bug once printed. All the extra details merged together, I could then delete the base model and separate out the individual parts for printing. This was such a large design I knew that I had to print it in multiple parts. The weaponry could be printed together, the same for the armour panels, but the main dome, a large single piece they had difficulty fitting onto the bed of the printer. In the end it had to turn it 90 degrees so it was vertical in order to complete the 7.5 hour print. When it was printed, I began to work on the hex bug itself. I removed the top part of the chassis and trimmed extra details so that the body was completely round as this is how I'm able to attach the printed part to the model. I also made a point to print this using opaque resin for two reasons. One, the remote control used infrared light to communicate with the sensor and I wanted to make sure not to block it by a solid object. And two, transparent windows bitches! If you have the option to make glass look like glass, take the opportunity. To make sure the primer does not cover the windows, I use some artist masking fluid. This stuff is great, it can be painted onto almost any material and when it dries it forms a gum like mixture that can be peeled off later. I use it for all my clear plastics like on the cockpit and model airplanes. With all that out of the way, let's head over to the... no wait. Why head over to the turntable? when this creation could show itself off. Fully articulated with 360 degree movement, this is the ultimate show of power on the battlefield. And while you cannot technically feel this model in your army, it does make an awesome little plaything if you want to take your models off the tabletop and off the kitchen floor. Bring a little bit of 40k to the remote control world. As always, all my STL files can be found on my Cults 3D page for free, which I'll link in the description. Thank you very much for watching, until next time, I'll catch you all soon.